My name is Richard Woods. I'm the Senior Hazards Advisor for Civil Defence and Emergency Management Department at Auckland Council. So um, I'm going to talk to you today about um, how weather works, but in two kind of contexts. In its simplest form, weather is just the distribution of EMSs right around our globe and how heat and moisture basically influence those EMSs. And I'm going to describe that on, on two scales to you today large cyclonic events and how they can impact Auckland, and then your smaller scale thunderstorm events and the hazards associated with each because I think the latter isn't necessarily appreciated, which was basically um, shown to us on the 6th of December with what we know is the, the Hobsonville tornado or Hobsonville Fenorpai tornado, but it was actually a downburst or windburst, which I'll get onto later. I'm just going to describe a wee bit about the atmosphere and how that varies with altitude because I think that's quite important to understand. Touch on the global circulation system and how that influences cyclone systems. So when we look at uh, the atmosphere in altitude view, on the side here I've, I've just got altitude 10Ks, 20Ks and 30Ks and I'll split that into the troposphere and the stratosphere for you. There's three elements I want to describe. Average atmospheric pressure is about 1,013 hectopascals at the surface of the Earth, and that decreases as you go higher in altitude. From a wind perspective, um, surface winds are very variable, and that's because as winds travel across or close to the Earth's surface, it causes friction and interacts with things like buildings and landscapes, and the Southern Alps is a particularly good example of that. In the stratosphere, because it's not as close to the Earth, you don't have that friction. And in New Zealand, you've got these westerly trade winds, which go straight across. And so they're basically moving in one linear um, flow across New Zealand westerly. And interestingly, average temperatures um, at the surface are around about 20 degrees Celsius. As you go higher in the troposphere, they decrease with height. And this is a really, really important thing. If we're putting hot, humid air quite quickly up into colder air temperatures, then you get condensation and, and weather forming. All of our weather occurs in the troposphere. So there's no moisture above the troposphere. To put that in context of where normal avi uh, aviation or, or commercial airplanes fly, they fly just above our weather at the bottom of the stratosphere there. When we're looking at charts or maps, all this is showing us is how those air masses are distributed at the surface. Met Service release a number of weather balloons around the country, and they're able to measure the profile of the wind, the temperature, and wind direction from those weather balloons to understand how those key variables are interacting through the profile of the atmosphere. Moving on to global circulation, so going into the context of these big cyclonic systems which could affect Auckland, at the equator we've got the inter, um, intertropical convergent zone which is basically 10 degrees north and 10 degrees south. There's a lot of convection and a lot of heat occurring in this, uh, in this area, and that's due to these trade winds, the northeasterly trade winds and southeasterly trade winds, pushing the heat that's generated in the tropics up into this area here, um, creating a lot of convection and a lot of rainfall and a lot of storms. In New Zealand, we're stuck in the, what's known as the Roaring Forties, so these westerly winds that move across um, 40 and 50 degrees latitude through here in the, south, in the Southern Ocean aren't hindered by a lot of um, landmass, and as you can see, 40 to 50 degrees north, you've got a lot of continental landmass. The winds get caught up in that continental weather, so you don't see uh, you don't see these westerlies, these strong westerlies, um, firing through like you do in the Southern Ocean. The only thing that's really in the way is Tasmania, the South Island, and a wee bit of South America. 